everyone and welcome to another wonderful episode of Paranormal Minds. I'm your host Shannon Ray and we're here this week with the Demon Doctor. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about the Demon Doctor before we get started. The Demon Doctor is not a priest, demonologist, psychic, or pastor, nor is he a medical doctor. The Demon Doctor is, a very, spirit is very spiritual but lays no claim to one religion. He takes the good in, of every religion and puts it to work in his life. The Demon Doctor has the ability to bestow upon him to be able to cast out any type of haunting, including demonic possession. The Demon Doctor has been tested by the spiritual world and has been taught how to use his ability for many years. The Demon Doctor gives all thanks and glory to the Heavenly Father in Jesus' name. In 2010, Dr. Dobb, Dodd, oops, was approached um, by a Reiki master who asked him why he was not using his gift that the Heavenly Father gave to him. Being baffled, Dr. Dodd asked what gift he was talking about. The Reiki master stated the gift was to cast out demons and other spiritual beings. Dr. Dodd stated that he had no such gift and asked why the Heavenly Father would give him such a gift when at the time Dr. Dodd was not spiritual in any way. The Reiki master proceeded to tell the doctor that when he passed away in a car accident years ago and was brought back, he was also brought back with a gift from the Heavenly Father, but he had not accepted the gift. The Reiki Master also stated that if the doctor would accept the gift, there was no going back to the way things were before accepting, and he could never get out of the world of casting out to help others. The doctor took some time to think about accepting the gift. He came to the conclusion that if the Heavenly Father has given you something and He has chosen you, there must be a reason that one should not turn down the Heavenly Father. Dr. Dodd went to the Reiki Master and told him that he accepts the gift and ability to cast out. The Reiki Master then stated the training that training would begin. Dr. Dodd thought that the Reiki Master would start showing him how to use the ability, but the doctor was wrong. The Reiki Master told the doctor that the spirit world would test him first and not to be afraid of what was about to happen. From that point, <clears throat> strange things started to happen to the doctor. He started seeing black shadows, objects being tossed across the room, and even being held under the water by an unseen force. After some time had passed, the doctor became unafraid of what was happening around him. The Reiki Master started teaching the doctor how to use his abilities. From that point on, Dr. Dodd has helped thousands of people all around the world with their paranormal hauntings, including demonic possession. And with that being said, I would like to welcome in um, Dr. J. Dodd, the Demon Doctor. Hi, how are you doing? I'm fine, I'm fine. How's everybody doing there? I think everybody is doing pretty good. I, I, I believe um, I'm getting some comments in the chat room that I need to take a breath that I'm too long-winded. <laughs> <laughs> You read that awfully quick. That's good, though. Well, yeah, I don't want to spend, like, the first, you know, 30 minutes just reading a bio. So, you know, it's only an hour. I want to be able to get in everything. Sure, um, sure. So, my first question to you is just kind of about you, first of all, before we dive into the whole demon doctor thing. Um, before you were approached in 2010, had you had any other experiences with the paranormal? Well, I actually grew up in a house that was um, haunted by spirits. Uh, I've never seen it, I can always feel it, but some, a lot of strange things happen. Uh, it was actually my sister, she's actually the one who only saw it, but uh, it was a little girl and it played a lot of pranks on people, you know, especially my father, he always take his stuff and hide it, uh, she didn't like him too well, but uh, yeah, I grew up in the, in the basically a haunted house, uh, it was a little girl spirit. Yeah, well that's, so. but you, your sister kind of had the experiences, not you or so much, right? Well, you know, little things around the home would happen, like, uh, you know, smoke alarms going off, no batteries in them, TVs coming on that wasn't plugged in, doors opening and shutting, uh, you know, dresser drawers opening and shutting when nobody's around. But uh, then after that, as I got older, I got into uh, working Ouija boards, which is a wrong move. Yeah. But uh, then I started experiencing more, and then I got out of it. But uh, actually, working the Ouija boards what led me to uh, asking it what year I was going to die in, and it told me. And I always played it off until that last December of that uh, of that year, because when I actually had that car accident and I passed away, mm -hmm. so I stopped using the Ouija board after that. 
Yeah, absolutely. Now, my next question to you is, you know, who exactly was the Reiki master that approached you? And if it was me and somebody approached me and was like, hey, you know, you have this ability, wouldn't that freak you out? Well, it did. It did. And uh, the thing is, the Reiki master at the time, uh, he was a close friend of mine, and he never said anything to me until, you know, one day we was out, and he, you know, brought it to my attention. And, you know, like I said, you know, like the Bible says, I thought he was crazy, you know, because I wasn't spiritual whatsoever. But uh, he was very spiritual, and, uh, of course, you know, being a Reiki master, he, you know, helped heal people. He was very, you know, in tune with what was going on around him in the spirit world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, my next question to you is, demonology is uh, the darker and less prominent type of uh, paranormal occurrence. Um, isn't this type of activity emotional, mentally, and physically draining on you? Uh, yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of times where, depending on how hard the case is, you know, how, you know, what's going on, uh, it seems to be the more active that it is, uh, the more out front that it is, it takes a toll on me, you know, I do get, the, you know, I do get very tired afterwards, it just be... You know, it's just, it's just a energy draining thing, and also a mental draining thing. There's so many steps in, into doing this the way I do it that it just it will again drain you. But I make sure I get enough rest to sleep, you know, to uh, you know help others without being overly tired. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, one thing that I really do like um, that you talk about. Um, in your bio and things of that nature is, you know, you pull from different religions and a lot of times when I talk with people that deal with, you know, in the field of demonology, they, it's not one particular religion. A lot of times it's older aspects, um, old world religions and not so much Christianity. Would you agree with that? Yes, I agree. I agree with that. But there's also a lot that has to do with uh, the Lost Sea Scrolls you know, the way I practice. You know my religion. Uh, like I said, you know nobody really knows what uh, religion is the right one to follow. Each uh, faith says they're the one to follow to, to uh, get to Christ. But uh, I find nowadays that uh, there's a lot of man-made rules in uh, organized churches now that you know that really don't pertain to you know, fighting demons or anything. You know, they, men can fit what they want into a church rule, and that's what it comes. And then everybody thinks, okay, you have to do it this way. Well, it's not always. You know the truth so you know that's why i take it you know a little bit from each religion that is the good and i put it to work in my life uh i'd rather follow god man-made law you know it's in a church you know but uh you know that's, that's my that's my uh, the old religion and you know a lot of the lost these full scribes that i was you know coming accustomed to you know that's that's what i look to yeah absolutely um, I do want to go ahead and say real quick, um, the Demon Doctors website is below me at the moment, right down there. Sometimes it's above me, but right now it's below me. Um, it's www.thedemondoctor.weebly.com, and it's on your screen. Um, if you need him, be sure to reach out to him and contact him. Um, and also, if you have any particular questions for the Demon Doctor, I am in the chat room right now. If you just want to plug them in. I will be more than happy to ask him, and I'm sure he'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, so my next question to you is about demonology itself. I kind of want to focus on demonology. Um, how would you personally define a demon? Um, is this de definition based on religious aspects? Well, what I believe a demon to be is a fallen angel that had fought uh, with Lucifer on his side in heaven during the, during the battle, and they too were cast out uh, you know, of heaven. That's what I believe myself a demon is. Uh, now there is off there is uh, evil spirits around that could be human. You know, you really don't know until I look into the case and I talk to my guiding spirits to what it actually is. But a demon can pose as anything it wants to. Be. You know, it, it can. You know, the range of the demon and demonology, the names of the demon and demonology. I really don't. You know, put a lot of care into that because, you know. It, to me, it's, okay, you're a demon, I'll care about your, your rank, your name, the bottom line is you got to go. You know, that's where I differ off from a lot of religions, to where they say that, you know, you have to get the demon's name. Well, <clears throat> but in my case, I, I really don't care what the name or the, or the uh, what their pull is and their rank and stuff. It, they have to go. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, they, I mean, they do. Um, do you find that um, people 
automatically go to thinking it's a demonic haunting and don't consider real possibilities first? Do you have that case where a lot of clients maybe identif misidentify it a lot? Yes, I do. I get a lot of times where people say, you know, they think they have a demon, you know, at their home doing stuff. You know, a lot of times, it's, you know, it may just be an earthbound spirit. Everybody thinks that a black shadow is automatically a demon. Well, that's not necessarily true. You know, it can be an earthbound spirit coming across as a shadow. Even way they can make contact with you, you know, they're going to try doing that. Uh, there's a lot of people who call who actually think they have a demon where I'm going to say, you know, at least half the time or 60% of the time, you know, it's not a demon. It's only because, you know, when I look into it and, and see what is actually there, you know, I can tell whether it is a demon or it's just an earthbound spirit trying to get their attention. Now, there are a lot of uh, earth house spirits I found out that actually like to come across as a demon, okay? They want to seem more powerful than what they are, and they want to put fear into a lot of people, like especially if it's a yeah, family home, you know, that's uh, all of a sudden somebody else has bought, and <clears throat> they want to get them out of there. They'll come across saying, you know, some demon's name when actually it's just an earth house spirit that's doing all the trouble. They want to scare the people as much as they can to get them out. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I have to admit that, tell me if you agree with me or not, with the reality TV that's on right now about the paranormal field, most people think instantly it's demonic. And demonic hauntings are so very rare. Would you agree with that? Well, you know, I come across, you know, I do come across with quite a few demons, but a lot of times, like I just got done with in, uh, in Ireland, there was uh, many of uh, earthbound spirits around, but there was also demons around just watching, you know, because to them, time's nothing. So, you know, they can let uh, these earthbound spirits do what they want to do, and they can just sit back and watch until, you know, they want to join in. You know, they want to cause more havoc, cause more problems. So, you know, there actually there are quite a lot of uh, demons uh, in uh, paranormal hauntings, but it doesn't mean they're actually doing anything. You know, they just have their own time and they're waiting to, you know, do what they want to do. So, you know, it's, it's just all matter what the case is and what's going on. And, you know, you got to investigate it first a little bit, get some information from the clients and see, you know, dig a little bit into the background. And then see, see what they've done. You know, if they worked Ouija boards, have they done tarot cards, you know, stuff like that. You know, you just got to dig into the case first and know the background before you actually, you know, say it, it may be a demon or it may not be a demon. You know, a lot of times, too, people who have curses put on them, they look to it as being a demon because their life is so going downhill. It's, uh, you know, it's more, uh, you know, when I look into it, I can actually tell them. But a lot of people first come off, like you said, as a demon. Uh, there are demon cases. Um, there are a lot of, you know, earth monster cases. It's just, you know, as far as putting a percentage on it, I really can't do that because, you know, there may be a demon around. Like I said, it's just blatant. Yeah. You know, the, problems yeah absolutely um we do have a question from the chat room um how do you banish um or move along these stranded spirits how can you move a spirit along well how do you do it how do you banish or move along um a stranded spirit okay if it's just a uh, you know lost soul spirit uh you know what i do is first you know i get some information from the client to be able to zone into uh, where they are their address and stuff like and what I do then is I send, uh, like, you know, I go into prayer and I talk to my guiding spirit. I talk to the Heavenly Father. And then what I'll do is I'll send my guiding spirit to their address to look in to see what is there. And by, what I use to talk to my guiding spirit is I use a pencil, okay? And the, the selection of a pencil to talk to your guiding spirit is... You know, it's not just, okay, which way is it move and this and that. I like this color. I, you know, this is one I like. It's pretty. I'll take it. That's not the way it works. You gotta, you gotta test the pencil first to know that your guiding spirit is talking to you. It's not going to lie to you. That's how you select your pencil. Okay, it's a long process. But anyway, uh, back to uh, how I do it is I talk to my guiding spirit through the pencil. It will only answer yes or no questions to me. So after I send my guiding spirit there, I will start asking questions. I'll, you know, I'll say, okay, is there any demons there? He'll give me a yes or no answer. Play pendulum swings. Is there an earthbound spirit there? If he says yes, I'll start asking, okay, is there one? And if it says yes, I'll say, is there five? And he'll give me a yes or no answer. 
And then, uh, you know, once I pinpoint how it's there, I can start asking questions why it's there. You know, is it a curse or is it, you know, you know, just why it's there, how, how it's tied to this home or how it's tied to this family. And then again, it's just the swing of the pendulum giving me a yes or no answer to my questions. Then if, uh, you know, if, you know, if the spirit is there and, uh, you know, what I do then is, I go back into prayer to the Heavenly Father, and then I also ask to speak, the ability to speak to uh, certain archangels that I call on. And I always, and once I get, you know, their attention, I send them to the address too. And then I have my guiding spirit speak for me to the spirit that is there. And, you know, I give a commandment to be move on. They're not appreciated there, and there's not, you know, not uh, welcome there. And if they don't move on from me speaking to them with my guiding spirit, that's when I ask the large animals to be able to take them and cross them over to where they're supposed to be. And then once again, as they're doing this and uh, they're going to the house, I, you know, again, uh, speak to my guiding spirit and ask them, you know, are the angels done? You know, give me a yes or no answer. And then after that, uh, you know, once I get the confirmation that they're done, I go back into prayer and thank each one of the archangels one by one. I go in and thank the Heavenly Father. And then, you know, I close in prayer to the Heavenly Father. And then I call the clients and then they can do the rest of, you know, blessing the home. You know, with salt or sage or, you know, water, stuff like that. That's how I basically cross them over is by being able to talk to the archangels and have them actually cross the, the uh, lost spirit over for us. Yeah, absolutely. Now, when, um, can you explain um, to us some signs of a demonic occurrence? Like, when is it time to call for help? Well, you know, for you, as soon as you start seeing things start happening, you know, I would say, you know, actually, if you get a new place, if you're moving into a new home, you know, call on myself or call on somebody close to come to a house blessing. Call on your, your preacher, your, your pastor. Uh, a priest to have them come in and do home blessing first, okay? Uh, then if things start happening, you know, as soon as you start seeing where things start happening, you know, give me a call or whoever you trust in a call that, uh, you know, try to get rid of. Because uh, a lot of times before a blessing can be done, if there's a spirit there or a demon there, you have to clear it out first before the actual blessing will take place and keep other uh, things out of your home. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you believe that things of a demonic nature are only a threat to those that believe in the religious aspects of demons? No, no, I don't believe so because, you know, nobody really knows what the haunting is. You know, like I said, even the uh, earthbound spirit can be, you know, malevolent and, you know, and hurt people themselves because they're angry. Now, uh, of course, is as far as that as it being a demon, nobody really knows until, you know, like I won't know until I actually have the person's permission to look into where I send my guiding spirit and, you know, ask what is there. I don't know until uh, my guiding spirit gets back with me, you know, for confirmation what it is. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a touch and go situation with whether it's actually a demon or if it's actually just a malevolent earthbound spirit. I mean, there's a lot of times too where people say, you know, they have UFOs. Yeah. encounters in their home and um, I found out that with the UFO encounters is there's, if there's a UFO encounter is normally a demon somewhere around there and who's, who's not saying that the UFO that they're seeing the aliens is not actually a demon because a demon composes anything it wants to be come across to you as anything so you know whenever I get a UFO case most of the time it's a demon that's you know, causing all this, because it knows, a demon knows what you're afraid of, what you're interested in. They can come across to you as anything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you believe there are any types of character commonalities between individuals that are affected by demonic occurrences? Like, is there anything similar between these people? Well, you know, uh, if you worked a Ouija board in your life, at some point in your life, most likely you're going to have one around you, okay? Uh, if you work tarot cards, if you speak, if you try any type of way to uh, communicate with the dead, uh, most likely you're going to open up something that, uh, you know, an evil spirit's going to be able to come through or demons going to be able to come through. Uh, you know, anything, anything that uses to contact the spirit world, 
even though people say we can work to say if you light these candles and you say a prayer to pray a prayer to archangels, Michael, and so on, it, it's not a definite foolproof, you know, safety net. You know, these other spirits can come in, and they can actually be with you for years before they even show you show themselves. You know, seances, Ouija boards, tarot cards, anything like that. You, you have the potential of bringing in. Uh, something you don't want. Yeah. Do you believe that psychics and mediums have the ability to kind of filter out those kind of things? Because I know a lot of them use tarot cards. Do you think they have that ability to kind of filter out, you know, a demon occurrence? Well, I think they have the ability to, you know, uh, look into the case and actually, you know, have to tell whether it is a demon or if it is, uh, you know, an earthbound spirit. You know, but I don't believe they have the actual ability to exercise it out. Okay, they, their ability is to con you know make contact with the spirit world and uh, to gain knowledge from the spirit world of what is going on. You know, like some of them speak to the dead, some of them just have this feeling that comes across to them. You know, and maybe some of them say they can see them, which is you know it's a, it's actually a gift that God has given them. You know, to be able to see, feel, and hear and speak to spirits. You know, as far as a medium getting for a psychic getting a rare one, I, I myself don't believe that way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you believe um, there is a link between generations with a family and demonic occurrences? Well, a lot of times you're probably uh, looking at uh, possibly a curse. Uh, you know, back in the old days, uh, you know, a lot of people dug into Ouija boards or seances, you know, and they think they have control of what it's came through and who they're talking to, and they may want something for, for themselves in, in, their, in their lifetime. And usually it's not the one who's asking for, you know, the special ability or gift or whatever that pays the price. It's always normally the one later on down the road who pays the price. You know, it's just like, uh, you know, the children pay for the father's sins. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe in that, I believe in that uh, highly. It's, you know, it's it, if it's if it's going, if it's going down the family tree of uh, just you know everything being miserable and bad and you know and things always occurred in their family and a lot of death, you know I'm on point to it's more of a curse that somebody in your family has done something, you know to gain something from you know the spirit world and you're paying the price for it. It's not them, you know. But like I said, you know, I really don't know you know until I actually look in on the case and stuff like that to actually what it is. It's a family trait. More likely, it's going to be a curse that somebody did somewhere, or somebody wronged somebody that practiced some black magic that can put a spell or you know curse on the family. Yeah. Um. So, what type? Let's talk about the demon doctor. Okay. The the, the <clears throat> concept, I guess, so to speak. Um. What type of services do you offer? Well, uh, I can get rid of demons, earthbound spirits, lost souls. Uh, I can do uh, house blessings and things like that. But uh, whenever I'm doing the cleansing remotely, I can do it either remotely or I can actually do them on hand. It's all up to the client. And also, uh, it depends on how strong and how tough the case is. Now, if I do a, a cleansing uh, remotely, uh, you know, it may take a day or two to actually see the full effect of the cleansing. Now, I just believe that's because of the distance between uh, myself and the client. Okay, and I've even done uh, possessions, uh, you know, remotely, but it takes, you know, a few days to actually see the, the full effects, you know, the, you know, how things are a lot heavier, or not as heavy as they used to be, you know, and uh, the, the, everybody's just brighter to them, they don't feel like they used to, everybody has to get over the residual feeling of having this with them for so long, uh, and I've even done a, uh, possession case in Puerto Rico, you know, and I live here in, in uh, Pennsylvania, I, you know, she was always scared, she had, you know, stuff coming out of her nose, it was a, it was a long story, but she's having like a possession case, and, it, it, you know, I got rid of the initial possession, and she didn't feel no more, but it was that residual feeling she had that she had to, uh, you know, get over, and actually see, you know, the effects of it when it was there, it took a few days. But, you know, she's doing great. She's doing fine now. Yeah. Um, can you, 
Um, what is, the, you explain the difference between cleansing at a remote or on location. Is one better than the other? <laughs> uh, yes, the, like I said, the remote cleansing, you know, you may take a day or two to see the full effect of it. If I'm actually on hand at the home, you know, you can see the effects of it immediately. Plus, uh, after I get done doing the cleansing, I also go around and I bless the home for, you know, for nothing else coming in. But uh, when it's done remotely, over the, you know, after I talk to them on the phone, if I hang up, I do my process, and then I call them back afterwards. And I give them instructions on how to salt their home, how to bless their home, and possibly, you know, do other things to get the residual, you know, off of, you know, like su such things like, you know, take a bath and uh, white vinegar and, and uh, table salt, you know, just to get that off of. But the difference is, uh, on hand, you see everything right in there. If it's done remotely, it may take a day or two to see the full effect. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we do have a question from the chat box. Um, is is there a charge for your demonic removals? No, I'm totally free. Uh, I charge nothing whatsoever for my services. Uh, the only thing I ask is if the person, if the clients want me on site, on hand to do something, or if I feel that the uh, case is strong enough that it won't stop going to work remotely because there's so many different homes and like sometimes there's two or three places involved that's tied together with the family. If I ask to be on hand or the client wants me to be on hand, the only thing I ask for is travel expenses and lodging. Okay. But my services itself, it's totally free. Just like uh, remotely, it's totally free. So uh, I work off of donations, which, you know, some do, some don't. I don't ask for donations, you know, after I cleanse it. You know, it's all up to them if they want to give it up. Yeah, absolutely. Do you perform all of these services by yourself, or do you have any kind of help or aid? Well, my wife, um, she she can see uh, spirits. She's, you know, she's sensitive like that. She can see, you know, if a spirit's over in a corner or a spirit's over there. And she can also feel uh, what is around, you know, whether it's a good or it's a evil spirit or it's a benevolent spirit that's angry about something. You know, she helps me out a lot, but the majority of the time, you know, it's it's, it's myself who's doing uh, the cleansing and the blessing and stuff like that. But uh, my wife also, you know, she helps out too, saying, okay, there's, there's a ghost over here or there's a, I think I get a bad feeling about this over here because I've seen this what happened, you know. She helps out, you know, but part of the time it's just myself. Yeah. Is there anything in particular you do to prepare for a demonic removal? Well, you know, I gotta, it's kind of hard to explain. Whenever I go into prayer and uh, speak to the Heavenly Father, you know, I gotta have a really strong contact, you know, with speaking to Him, you know, going to prayer. I got to really, I got to shut out everything around me. Everything's got to be quiet in order for me to actually feel like I'm making contact with the Heavenly Father. And the same way when I go into meditation to to uh, take the steps and contact the uh, archangels that I call on. You know, everything's, you know, the, the quieter it is, the more I can concentrate, the better. But uh, a lot of times, you know, that's, that's basically what it is, just, you know, things being quiet so I can make that contact. You know, if I have a distraction, it's hard to. i got to make sure that I get the uh, contact that I need to with poor, especially in demonic cases. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I told you I get about halfway through these interviews and my throat, like, starts going crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's the darndest thing. That's all i got to say. Um, can anyone be trained um, to handle demonic removals? And you want to be trained to do it. Well, you know, like uh, with me, it was brought to me. I was able to, you know, make contact to be able to do this to get rid of what is there, demonic or earth or spirit. Now, I'm not saying that another person can go through the motions of what I do, but they may not have the same results. I wouldn't want to teach somebody how to do it that having their father hasn't given me permission to teach because, you know, it can actually cause more harm. You know, a lot of people ask me how I, you know, how I do a case, and I tell them, but they also state that, you know, it, I'm not telling you everything. There's more to it 
what I've told you. I just gave you the basic rundown because if you don't have an ability to do this, if God hasn't given you the okay to do this, this is your phone calls. This is going to be more harm. Uh, actually, I've been speaking to a lady over in the UK who wants to become a uh, exorcist, and uh, she's asking if uh, you know she can do it. And I, I keep telling her, you know, you're not ready. If you want to be an exorcist, you know, you're not ready. You got to go through a lot more training. You got to you got to change your life. You got to look at things differently. You got to be you got to be very humble. You know, with everything, you know, because uh, whenever you do a cleansing, the other world, the other spirit world is going to know who you are, you know, and you start trying to do this. As it starts happening, you know, and, and God has graced you with the ability to cast out, you know, there's going to be demons and spirits and everything you know, coming to you to try to get you to stop. You know, so you got to be very humble on everything. you got to be able to have the ability, this, you know, to have this gift from the Heavenly Father to do it. You know, then there's certain steps you got to take. You have certain training you got to take. You got to be trained by the spirit world. You got to, you know, enhance, enhance everything. It's, you know, not just everyone can do it. Yeah, I believe that 100%. Um, how does privacy play into those which you offer services to? You know, <laughs> I'm glad you asked that question. You know, there's been, there's been a lot of uh, paranormal hate groups. There's been a lot of individuals who, you know, they try to get, you know, they say, I'm a fraud, okay, you can't do this, you can't do that, you're just another fraud that's out there. And, you know, I just, you know, I try to accommodate them and answer their questions, and all, most of the time it's, you know, they move words around and look at things differently. But uh, even some of them have asked for my clients, you know, and, and contact numbers and emails and I tell them, no, you're not getting that. I said, the only thing you're going to get is a testimony, which is all, some of them is on my webpage, so I get thousands of testimonies who want to see it. And then they say, okay, well, that's not credible. I want, I want these people's you know, numbers. I want to talk to them. I, you know, I just I shoot them down because that's what's between the client and I. Everything is confidential. You're not going to get it. I even have one uh, uh, hate group, I guess you could say, uh, threatening law enforcement on me. You know, saying, I'm going to get these in court. You know, this is public accident, you know. And I said, we'll go right ahead because I'm not going to give anything to happen until I get in court. You know, and all then they just kind of dropped off and stuff. But, no, the client's information and what they tell me stays with me. It's between them and myself. Yeah, and see, you know, I have a paranormal group here in Georgia, and that is one of the things that I hold dear. And our clients know about us. Not only do the clients tell us what level of confidentiality we can release and we're under that legally and obligated but every member of our group is under a very strict confidentiality agreement to protect the client because a lot of people don't want these people at their doorsteps knocking on their doors they don't That's want true. to be you know scrutinized and look like a three ring circus at their house these are people's homes and their lives right right you know, I've been contacted by, you know, some different TV shows and stuff, you know, one of uh, my clients' cases and stuff like that, and talked to them. I said, no, 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 let me talk to them first, okay? You're not going to talk to them. Let me do the contact and see if they want to do this or not. And then usually, you know, I get, I get more information. I say, okay, you know what? I'm not even going to do it. You know, it's, it's not right. But I just normally shut them down. You know, that's the reason why you don't see me on TV. You know, I've been asked many times on different shows, but... It always ends up being the same thing or same thing. Yeah, you know? and I, I've said this since day one. If I had a TV executive producer approach me, because I've been doing this for 10 years since I was 16, way before it was cool and on TV. Um, so um, if I was come up to by an executive producer and they said they'd offer me $5 million to be able to just run my group and have control of everything, I'd say no. Because the gr my integrity and morals are in this group and what I do. And if somebody comes and tries to stomp all over it, it's not going to go well. And, you know, cli and clients are so because they need help. And that's why I started, you know, our paranormal group. And I'm sure you're doing what you're doing is to help people. And if, you know, right. people just... On a lot of our cases, when I put out evidence, it'll say this is a client's home, and it'll say the state, but it won't say anything else. And that's the privacy clause that we have where we can release the evidence, but we have to change the name, and we can't have any kind of, there can't be any affiliation to the location whatsoever. And so I've had people come to me and be like, well, where was it? Da -da -da -da. I can't tell you that. You know, and yeah. if you're out there yeah. telling people there's something wrong with you, you're not serving clients, you're not helping clients, 
you know, it, it's all about going into people's homes. You need to have the right mentality when you go into people's homes. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's why I keep, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's, that's why I keep everything, you know, confidential. You know, everything's locked up tight, you know. So, and as far as these paranormal TV shows that you see, you know, Tom, you know, you have to, you know, it's, it sounds interesting at first. But once you start, you know, getting more into, you know, into how they do things, you know, that's where I cut it off. Like, okay, no, I don't want this. That's not good for them. It's not good for me. No thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, can you um, inform us about what a demonic possession would look like? Well, I can tell you it's not going to be like you see on TV with the exorcist or anything. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no spinning green soup or any, no pea soup or anything like that. You know, and no cuts of abrasions on their faces, just out of nowhere. Uh, of course, you know, you may have, you may have some scrapes. You may, you may, you know, it's it's more like it's more like the person has just gone crazy, okay, and paranoid of everything. Uh, they may have you know a little bit stronger strength than than they normally have. They may be able to speak a different language that the that they don't know. You know, they've never studied or anything like that. As far as it being uh, like the Exorcist, it's, it's not quite like that. Uh, I know a lot of people have seen the uh, Exorcism of Emily Rose. You know, it's a lot like that. It's just you know not, they threw some theatrical stuff in there, but you know, as far as it being crazy and stuff like that, you know, it's basically what a person who is being possessed acts like. If they're not themselves. They're totally out of character. You know, little things, you know, like, like I stated, the, the language, you know, maybe the strength, you know, they cut themselves or something like that and have hatred towards everybody. You know, that's just, you know, it's not, it's not like the movies. It's, you know, it's more common day mental things you can look at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my next question to you is, with a demonic haunt compared to, you know, a spirit haunt, would you say that, you know, a demonic occurrence has more strength to move heavier objects, to cause harm, more harm to the client and things of that nature? I believe so, yes. Uh, a, a demon has more of a strength than what he has, you know, an earthbound spirit would have by uh, doing anything. But, uh, you know, if, if, it, if it's a demon, it may come across to you as being your one of your friends that have passed away. It will, it will, it will gain your trust first before it actually shows itself. You know, but as far as kind of more strength to do things, yes, I believe a demon does have that over an earthbound spirit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my next question um, might be kind of tough. You don't have to answer it if you don't want to. Um, <laughs> well, I'm just being honest. If you could go back and change when you died and when you were given this gift, and if you could change all that, would you? Would I change going through the car accident? Yeah, going through the, the car accident and getting the gift and being able to do what you do now. Would you change that? No. No, I wouldn't. Um, I probably would like to do without the, you know, the pain of the accident. Yeah. <laughs> that I had. And the hardship that I brought at first. But, uh, you know, there, there, I didn't, I wasn't, uh, made aware of my gift right after the car accident. It took years and years until I met the, you know, the Reiki master. Uh, so, you know, there's there a lot of hatred towards God right after the uh, car accident. I even cursed God up and down because at the time of that point in my life, you know, I was living on my own. I wasn't around family. You know, I was working and just going home and, you know, I started falling into drinking a lot. I just didn't like the way my life was going. And when the car accident happened, and, you know, and I woke up, I wonder where I woke, actually woke up is, is uh, they taking me out of the car and putting a, a neck brace around me. I woke up then and went back out. And then whenever they shocked me in back the ambulance, back the ambulance, you know, my eyes, I saw the lady standing there trying to just hold her balance with the pads in her hand. And then, uh, I went out again, and then I was laying at the hospital in the emergency room, and they had a, uh, a blue, like, blanket over my face. And they actually thought I died right there. Because, you know, when somebody dies, they cover your face up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I heard yelling, I said, I'm not dead, I'm not dead. And the guy comes up and says, oh, yeah, we know. 
So we're just going to spit up your face over here. I got a long pet on my face. <laughs> you know, so that kind of scared me. But uh, it took years, uh, you know, so I met the Reiki master. I had to calm down because, like I said, I was, you know, at this point in my life, I didn't want to live. I wanted to die. I wanted to take the easy way out. You know, and I, even though Ouija board said I was going to die in 89, and that was December of 89, you know, I just kind of laughed it off, played it off, you know, but actually I was hoping it would happen. So, you know, that's where I was at. But, uh, yeah, I cursed God up and down for years, and I had to calm down from that until, you know, the Reiki master, you know, and I, you know, met and became friends. And then, and then I was told about, you know, what I brought back with me. So, you know, it was, you know, if I had to go back and do it over again, yeah, I would because I love helping people. You know, I, I this is this is a gift. Sometimes it's rough to have because you know people call on you. And you just like, okay, I got my own problems. You know, forget yours. I got to deal with mine. But, you know, that's when my wife also kicks in and saying, no, you got to take care of these people. They're relying on you. You know, they're going through hell. You got you, know, you got to help them. So she she pushes me along also when I just want to give up sometimes. If I had to do it all over again, yes, I, I would do it all over again, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you believe, you know, with your near-death experience and everything, and I know a lot of people that have the near-death experiences, they come back different. Do you believe there's that's coincidence or there's something to it? You know, everybody's uh, experience of death, what I found out, is totally different because in mine, I didn't see no white tunnel. I didn't see no, you know, light anywhere, bright lights or angels or past relatives or anything like that. Whenever I crossed over to the other side for a short time, it was just a, a complete blackness, a, a complete calm. Like, you know, there's nothing going to hurt me. There's nothing going to happen. You know, you're just there is what it felt like to me. But everybody has their own different experiences at the, you know, near death. So, you know, is there, is there one common thing to look at? No, I don't believe so. Is there, is, if, will you see a light at the end of the tunnel? No, I don't believe so. Everybody has their own uh, experience in that, you know, in that area. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what are your hopes within the future? What do you hope to have accomplished? Well, you know, just helping everybody. You know, anybody I can help, I will, because this, this is already some terrifying case, especially when it deals with kids. You know, I've helped so many kids and their families and parents out. You know, it brings me joy, you know, and happiness knowing that I've helped them because God has given me this ability. But uh, for future, what's in the future, I don't know. It's hard to tell what it holds, you know. Whatever God's plans you know, have for me, you know, I'm just going to follow along with it. I may have questions why, <laughs> you know, like everybody else, but, you know, he has a plan. He, it's, it's, you know, it's in action and what holds for the future. I, I couldn't tell you. I really can tell you at this time. I know there's some things in the works for me, but, uh, you know, whether it happened or not, I don't know. You know, it's all in God's hands, not mine. Yeah, absolutely. So besides, um, the demon being the demon doctor what do you do you know professionally in your life well uh actually you know i used to be a uh, security science supervisor of a uh in a pharmaceutical company you know and life has changes and so forth you know and i've done many different uh, jobs here and there and uh you know the supervision i'm in the management of things but, uh, you know, I'm also, I've been a uh, Ohio State Patrol officer back in 91. I started out in law enforcement. But, uh, you know, it's just, you know, all what life brings in, what, what you can do to, to get by and survive, you know, that's, you know, you got to do what you have to do. Now, for the things I like to do for fun, you know, I like to work around the house, you know. I like, uh, you know, mowing the lawn, fixing up the cars. I love, I love all those and stuff like that. You know, fixing them up, making them look good, run good. And, you know, that's that's my passion is, you know, trying to keep everybody happy, helping people, and just do what I like to do for fun as much as I can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, where did the name the Demon Doctor come from? I know that I'm sure you take a lot of slack because it has the doctor on it, but where did that right. name come from? <laughs> uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, Actually, when I started out, uh, I was with another woman, and, you know, he had the ability, basically like I have, 
And, uh, you know, we wanted to change people's minds into, okay, so if you have a homie, you know, don't worry about the church. You know, you think a priest or a pastor or a church or something like that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, then, but, you know, if a person has, you know, a problem with their eyes, they go to an eye doctor. If they have problems, you know, medical problems, they go to a medical doctor. And we're just trying to change it to, you know, if you have a demon problem, harming problem, you call them the demon doctors. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we was a group for a while. And uh, he was the only one doing the cleansings for quite a while. And then uh, as I grew stronger in my ability, you know, he grew actually weaker in his because uh, he lost his humbleness. You know, he, he actually took on a godly figure for himself. And that's the reason why we broke up. And I'm out of my, but I hold the uh, registered name as the demon doctor, you know, so I, I just kept it. Yeah, I, I found that. Um, are you still there? Okay, it kind of made a click noise. I just wanted to make sure it didn't cut off on you. Um, I kind of find that as people kind of go through this field and move their way up, they lose that humble factor. You know, the factor that why you're here, what you're supposed to be doing. Exactly. You know, whenever I was uh, with my partner, um, you know, we was getting calls. And, you know, I, I try to call and contact him. And, okay, he would do the cleansing, and then, you know, like a day or two later, I'd get a call back from the client saying, you know, it's, it's there, it's still there. And then I would call him and say, look, you know, something must have happened. They're saying it's still there. The same stuff is still happening. And then he would come up with, you know, excuses of why it happened, you know, why it's still there, or why it's, you know, it came back. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> you know, this ain't right, you know. He lost his humbleness. I think when he lost his humbleness, he also lost... Uh, you know, the ability to be able to get rid of things. You know, it is it is hard, you know, to, to stay humble. You know, but, uh, you know, it's just something you have to do. You got to get remain humble or, you know, you're going to lose out on, on your ability that God's given you. And that was the case. So yeah. I just started uh, I just started doing the cleansing myself, which really, you know, made him mad. I said, you know what, I'm done. If you go your way, I'll go mine. Yes, and sometimes that's just best is, you know, you got to go one way or another. And, you know, every, it's kind of, I kind of blame it a little bit on TV because everybody wants that fame. And with that fame yeah. comes a heavy price. You know, it really does. And I've met so many wonderful people in this field by what I do that I couldn't even begin to even think about going into that just entertainment world. Because it is, it's for entertainment, it's not reality. Right, right. You know, a lot of people ask me about, you know, do I believe in what the ghost hunters, you know, catch on as far as evidence? Do I believe in what the ghost adventures, you know, catch on evidence and so forth? And I tell them, I said, you know, for people to be on TV, you know, as far as the evidence goes, they got to keep it exciting for you know, the public to keep watching, okay? So some of the things ain't going to be all authentic, okay? They're going to have some things set up. That's just the way this business show is. They're, they're wanting the ratings. They want to stay on. This is what's going to happen. You know, so don't always believe what you see on TV. Yeah, I, I would agree with that 110 million percent. Um, just for everybody, one more time, because before we close out, I don't want to forget. Um, his The Demon Doctor's website is directly above my head at the moment. It's www.thedemondoctor.weebly.com. If you need him... Be sure to just reach out to him on his website. He's a super nice guy. He doesn't charge for his services, and he can definitely help you out with anything that you need. Um, so just let him know. Isn't that right? <laughs> That's right. Just email me, and I'll get in contact with you. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll be, absolutely. You have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose but the honoring that's causing the problem. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, would you? I, I do want to close out with a little bit of a theosophical deeper question um i hear a lot of people say they believe the veil between our reality and other realities are thinning you know that's why there's more spirit hauntings and more demonic occurrences and things like that would you agree with that well i agree that more that uh we look into you know the other spirit world the more people that are there you know trying to get evidence and trying to look into things the more that's going to occur, you know, it's just like anything, the, the more you, 
you know, mess with something, you know, the more it's going to come out. That's uh, where I believe, you know, if you're looking for, you know, everybody's looking for demons, and everybody wants that big demon case, you know, to investigate and get EVPs and stuff on, you know, the more you deal with that, the more you try to call it in, it's going to come. You know, it's, it's just, you know, it's just a fact. The more you mess with something, the more relevant it's going to be. Yeah, and, you know, part of me kind of considers that maybe the veil is thinning out and it's becoming more prominent because we're becoming more accepting of it, and it doesn't have to hide anymore. Well, that's true, too. You know, I agree 100% with that also. You know, there's more people going to cemeteries, you know, to do investigations. There's people going to actual haunted, you know, places, you know, for investigations. You know, you get stuff like that, yeah, yeah, you know, you don't get a lot more out there that's you know bothering people yeah the spirit world and our world is no longer you know also what it, also what it is too is a religion you know they can say okay this is what happens when you die you know it's what we've been taught you know we're finding out now you know it's not like that mm -hmm. you know, we're always taught at church you know this this hasn't happened you know it's not happening because if so this will be happening so, you know, a lot of people are changing their minds about what they're being taught in church, going out looking for pains, and they're getting them. And that's just going to open the world up and thin that curtain, like you said, you know, for more activity. Yeah, I, I agree with that 110%. And, you know, what gets me is, do you have this happen with clients at all? Um, they call you and they contact you and they say, well, this is going on, and I saw this on Ghost Adventures, or I saw this on Ghost Hunters. Would you agree that you hear that more often? Because I hear it every time. <laughs> oh, yes, I agree. You know, there's even, you know, people come to me with, okay, uh, I believe I have demon with me. I was like, hey, why do you think you have this demon with you? Well, it whispered, you know, and it said its name, and it's just like a week before I seen a ghost of answers or something like that, I have a demon with the same name, you know. Well, at least these TV shows can play a lot into what, you know, how people act, and, you know, what they say. But, you know, that's that's where the, you guys' investigations go into and try to get your evidence. Uh, as far as me, you know, saying whether, whether it's that demon or not speaking to them, that's where, you know, I have to use my spirit guide for the answers to actually see if it's back to you and or if it's just an earthbound spirit or if it's nothing. Yeah, you know? and, and I'll, be the, I'll be the first one to tell you, I've always said, you know, a demonic haunting is out of my pay grade. I'd have to go to somebody else because it's just, it's not anything I've ever experienced and I would be the first one to tell you, I didn't, I wouldn't even know where to start and it's not my <laughs> place. You know, it's not my group's place. We And these groups will say, oh, we can handle it. No, you can't. No, you can't. When you come across something that's demonic, your insides literally revolt against it, I believe. And it, it's, oh, yeah. it's not it's not natural to us. You you think you can handle it, but you've never really been around it if you think if you did, you know? That, 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 I agree with you 100%. I mean, I even helped this the one investigator down in Tennessee. I mean, he calls me at least every all three or four months and all oh, no, I got this you know I got this spirit with me or I got this demon with me because I did a demon case and I'm like would you stop doing those <laughs> you know yeah. you're not supposed to be doing those stop it you know, well I need help with my QV I mean I, I cleansed him like you know five or six times that time to stop, stop doing demonic you know investigations and he'll go right back to it and finally I said you know what man I can't do this no more God's not wanting you to do this it's not your calling. You know it's not your calling. You know what you're supposed to do. So, you know, after this cleansing, you're on your own. <laughs> you know, yeah. sometimes you got to say, okay, if you're still calling the men, I've I, I, I you. I've told you what to do. But, yeah, absolutely. Well, I do want to thank you so much for being on tonight, Mr. Dodd. And for any of you that are wanting to contact um, the Demon Doctor, his website is on your screen right now. It's www.thedemondoctor.weebly.com. Be sure to jot it down. He's a super nice guy. Just reach out and contact him. And thank you so much, Mr. Dodd, for being on. I really do appreciate it, and I appreciate you enlightening us this evening on all the things that you do. Oh, thank you very much, and thank you for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, and I just want to let everybody know next week we will have Richard Contreras on, and he will be talking, he's a uh, resurrection talent on, um, and he will be talking about his work within the field. So be sure to tune in next week, same time, same place, and ne next is to Psych Chicks. It's its premiere with the lovely D-Dub, 
and Patty Sykes. So everybody, please enjoy it and have a great week. And I look forward to seeing you all back next week. Once again, Mr. Dodd, thank you very much. Thank you.